to click like, subscribe, the bell notification, and whatever else YouTube has you clicking on to support us. What's up everyone, I'm the Kaishin Okami from the Tokun Animation News Network here at Power Morphicon 2024 with... Mikey, Mikey from Hi, nice to meet you. For people who might not know what you have done, what have you done? What have I done? Uh, specifically to Power Rangers? Anything. Anything. Oh, man, that's that's pretty broad, man. Um, I'll keep it to Power Rangers stuff. Um, I was Thor in Operation Overdrive, um, and then in the Ninja Seal, I was uh, Brody and Levi's dad, Dame Ramirez, and uh, the third Red Ranger. <laughs> what was it like playing the father to Power Rangers and being one yourself? Yeah, it's funny, I've been telling people the story, actually, because um, being a Power Ranger is like one of those bucket list things as an actor. You know, that would be really cool to do one day. And then there's a point where you go, oh damn, I'm too old to be this anymore, you know? I'm no longer 18, you know? And so I thought I'd missed the window. And so when I got cast as a dad and they said, oh, by the way, we're also going to make you a Ranger. I was like, yes, never too late. Never give up on your dreams. <laughs> well, yeah, that was an interesting aspect because the Japanese version was all, they were all families and it was a generational thing of them being yeah, the yeah, ranger. Yeah. So the grandfather was a ranger, the yeah. dad, and then the son was the current one. Yeah, 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 that's super cool. Yeah, I heard that. I heard that, yeah. So, what was your experience on set like? Uh, look, the, the ranger's set is it's pretty much infused with the energy of the, the young kids that play the rangers. And for a lot of them, uh, it's you know, either their first big break or you know they're, they're new, new, new to the industry. So that kind of permeates this excitement and enthusiasm that on maybe other film shows or TV shows you don't necessarily get. You know, because there's a lot of old hands that are acting that are cynical and bitter or whatever and, and worn down by the industry. And I think Rangers, by its nature, have been a, a light, fantastic fun show. Plus having these young people that are just enthusiastic and keen and like they're, they're always beautiful shining lights, you know, they're good looking, they're talented, they can all do backflips, you know, it's it's like a pretty incredible group to hang around, so that kind of speaks through the cast and through the whole show. Now you've also done theatre. Yes, a lot of theatre. What challenges do you have different between theatre to recorded entertainment? The challenges? Um, I guess... The, the thing with theatre as an actor is you are very much responsible for telling the story and having the audience. Um, you have to be far more clever with your craft just in terms of shaping a performance to have people with you. When you're on a TV show or a film, that narrative or the story is really in the hands of an editor to shape the, the rhythms and the balances and the changes. So there's a level of disconnection or, or you've got to put your hands up to go I'm not really responsible for the end, end result of this and more like just be really in the moment with the thing that you're doing that's the best you can do on TV or film is just be really present and truthful to the thing um, because you don't know what's going to end up on the cutting floor you don't know what right. the, the story's going to be you know in a show like this there's a lot of CGI and you kind of go I don't even know what's going on right now um, but I'll do this thing that I've been you know what it is it's, it's, it's interesting um, both have both have really good uh, things that are good for them, and both have things that are so much fun. Now you've also done horror, some horror aspects. Yes. Ash yeah. versus the Evil Dead. Yeah, yeah. What was that like? That was amazing. Like I, um, I've never been a, I never was a huge fan of horror. Like it was a genre that I didn't really understand. I was like, why did you do this to yourself and watch this thing, which is grotesque and scary or whatever. But doing that show, I was lucky enough to get to work in the first step with Sam Raimi, who's an amazing, legendary director. And what was exciting is he was so... I can imagine he was just the same as he would have been at 15 when he had a handy cam he was making films himself, you know. He was excitable and he was, he was involved and he was like just musically authentic and so invested in the genre. And then doing the genre where you get the prosthetics and you see how they do all the stunts and the gore, it actually made me have a whole new appreciation of what horror is. Um, and I've watched horror ever since with quite a different eye as I go, ah, oh, I know how they would have done that, or that's what a fun way to show that arm being cut off, or whatever it is, you know, um, which is, yeah, it's, it's been good for me in that yeah. but it was also great to be sad. Well, yeah, one of the things I always 
comment on is like, yeah, anyone can make a docudrama or whatever, but a horror movie, you need to be able to be, have, be an expert to get this time with scares right, the death scenes properly. It's not just, oh, boo, and that's it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's quite an art to it. And like sitting next to Sam Raimi as he was like holding the camera or telling the camera how to operate and like flicking the paint at the actors from behind the camera. You know, I remember him saying, shake the camera, shake it like it's 1987, shake it. You know? <laughs> This, this guy, man, this is amazing. So, uh, since you've grown more appreciative horror movies, have you found a favorite? Um, I really like that one. Is it called X? And they go to the, the woods and there's the old couple and they're there to film. Oh, the, X, yes. Yeah, they're there to film the porn or something yes. like that. And, the, and the, the young girl plays the old lady. And yeah. I watched that. Have you seen the two sequels to that? No, I haven't seen Pearl that. and Maxine, they're incredible as well. Oh. And the cool thing about that is the whole trilogy is in a different style. Like X was like a 70s grand house film. Yeah. Pearl, Pearl it takes place during uh, like towards the end of World War One and is filmed in like beautiful colors like Wizard of Oz and it's kind of oh a God. psychological horror. And Maxine, so <laughs> and Maxine, the new one that just came out, is like a neo noir horror story. That is cool, yeah. Well, it's all next thing on the plane coming across, so I might watch it on the way home. I didn't realize it was related. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, so, I can't think of the actress's name suddenly. Mia Goth. Mia Goth. She plays both Pearl and uh, Maxine in X. So, Pearl is the young version of Pearl before everything went down in Pearl, and Maxine is her, char her character that was the survivor at the end of that. Oh my gosh, that's so cool. That is so cool. <laughs> it really is. Um, My brain just went. He just forgot the, what, to, what to go. I'll go with, with next. Spartacus. Oh, yes. <laughs> was, which I'll tell you the fun um, fun fact about Spartacus is I did that back in 2009, and my son in the Power Rangers, uh, lovely Jordy, um, is in the new remake, remake uh, rebooted version of uh, Spartacus, which is happening right now. Which is why Jordy's not here because he's filming Spartacus. So it's like classic flame on there as well. What do you like to do outside of acting? Um, at the moment, my son is 14, and I am trying to give him as much time as I can, you know, because I, I realize that that time at the moment is really precious and also quite fleeting. Um, he's a runner and, a, and an athlete, so I, I, we spend a lot of time at track, we spend a lot of time at gym together, um, so I'm really enjoying that. Uh, outside of that, my hobbies are pretty nerdy. I play D and D. I, I like chess. Um, I'm looking forward to. I like poker. I'm looking forward to moving to America one day. Like I want to come and live here once once Ali finishes school. Um, so that will be pretty fun. Yeah. Is there anything you're looking forward to the most in America to try out when you move here? Um, I love country music, so I'm looking forward to being in a place where that's a that's a thing that there's people that people really like, and I'll find I'll find a home with that, I'm sure. Um, I'm looking forward to being in an industry which is bigger than Auckland, you know, as far as acting is concerned. Like I do a lot of work in, in New Zealand over the last few years, but even then we only have you know five to ten shows going at one time. To be in a city where there's maybe fifty to hundred shows being filmed, my sort of C grade bit of hard career will be way way better. You know, I also think, you know, actors, if you keep going, you start to win a little bit by attrition, <laughs> you know, because the others give up. So I'm looking forward to sort of my career between 50 and 65 and seeing what that looks like and how it goes and being, being in another place. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Is there a role you're most proud about or something you had a really big impact experience on you? Yeah, I, um, I, I, three years ago I played with Beth. Um, which was a role that I always really wanted to do. Um, talking about a bucket list kind of idea. Um, I, I, I find that character so intriguing, you know, he's so flawed and so powerful and, and just tumbles downhill. And he's one of the few Shakespearean roles which is really physical, you know, because I'm a physical performer. So you get to have some real, you know, especially the last fight can be, can be as big as you like it, you know. So I got to play that role and I'm really proud about that. I think he's got 257 speeches, so I'm proud of, <laughs> proud of having made those lines. <laughs> Macbeth is my favorite Shakespeare. Oh, great. Right there we go. Nice, man. That's awesome. Um, so, that, yeah, that's really good. As far as TV and film go, um, I still feel like I haven't quite cracked it. I'm waiting. 
I did some work earlier this year on a show called The Remarkable Place to Die. I think it was okay. Um, but I'm looking forward to just getting better. Like, I'm, I'm still just learning and trying to improve. Um, <laughs> yeah. If you had a song to describe yourself, what would it be? Oh my gosh, a song to describe myself. Um, I'm Just a Gigolo by David LaRoff. Eddie, what social media links do you people find you at? Um, I have Instagram, I don't have Facebook anymore. My Instagram is Mikey underscore Mike 1974. Yeah, I'm happy to chat. I always chat with people here. Um, I've you know, met a whole bunch of people at the con here, which are now my friends on Instagram. So it's, yeah, it's really nice. Anyone can hook me up and ask questions. Or, yeah, or Any final words for our viewers? Um, yeah, be authentic, follow your dreams, and um, you can choose your response to life. You can't control life, but you can control it, how we react to the things that happen to us. So, you know, be positive and cheer up. Well, thank you so much for your time. Okay, Mark, it's great to meet you. Until next time.